My colleagues and I came on board of Arctic Sunrise to deploy the passive acoustic system, which is going to help us to evaluate the effects of the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico on the residential population of marine mammals, particularly endangered sperm whales and big whales. This is a great opportunity for us to collect data and do the best science we can to uh, study the impact of the oil spill on marine mammals. I'm an engineer and I came aboard the Arctic Sunrise to deploy a system to record the vocalizations of marine mammals at their feeding depth. The design of the system is very much like a recording system that you would use on your iPhone, a voice recorder that you'd use. It has a microphone, it has a battery, it has storage, and it can re replay the information when, uh, as you, when you push the play button. To survive at depth, the, the unit, all the electronics, has to be housed into an uh, aluminum pressure vessel. And the recorder is best uh, situated at the depth at which the animals are feeding, which is, a, and in this case, has been found to be at approximately 750 to 800 meters water depth. And at this depth, we're able to hear the, the animals at, from miles away. This system will run for approximately 12 days and record the full bandwidth of their vocalizations for that entire time. If you could think about the system coming off the bottom, so anchor comes first, then we have acoustic releases which we can communicate with and release it from anchor later on and bring it back to the surface so we can recover it. We have then set of flotations, just support the system in a vertical uh, alignment. Then we have the, the brain of the system, has a hot disk, batteries and a hydrophone. And then the next set of flotations which help us to keep it uh, in a vertical arrangement. We deployed buoys at three locations, two, lo uh, two buoys at each location. So the first is about nine miles from uh, Deepwater Horizon incident. The second is about 20 miles. And the third location is about 50 miles from Deepwater Horizon. Uh, we chose those sites because we had previous experiments performed at these particular locations and we have a baseline data. So that put us in a unique position to compare and estimate the population of sperm whales and big whales before the oil spill and after the oil spill. Uh, we just uh, recover our equipment. It was very successful uh, with a great help from the uh, ship crew. Uh, we got our system back and we're going to bring data to the lab and see how many acoustic recordings of the marine mammals we're going to get, what is the density of acoustic recordings. And based on a rate of phonations, you can uh, give a quantitative estimates on the number of whales which are in the area. Yeah, I have a special place in my heart for the Gulf of Mexico and for those sperm and big, big whales. I'm really, really uh, curious uh, to find out or if oil spill affected them in any way. And could be a set finding, so it could be neutral findings. Uh, we will know better after we start processing our data and uh, uh, draw some conclusions about the effects of the oil spill on marine mammals.